Coping with COVID is brought to you by the South Carolina Department of Health and Environmental Control. Visit scdhec.gov for an updated list of testing sites and important information on how to protect yourself, your family, and friends from the coronavirus. SCDHEC, healthy people, healthy communities. Also, the City of Columbia Office of Business Opportunities, helping to meet the needs of small, minority, and women-owned businesses in the City of Columbia. Log on to columbiasc.net backslash OBO. Agape Counseling and Training Center. Call 803-779-2777 for licensed professionals of counselors and social workers helping families, engaged and married couples, and individuals of all ages gain an understanding of all aspects of their life. If you're having a challenge coping with COVID, contact Agape Counseling and Training Center at agapects.com. And Columbia Housing Authority. The agency is looking for stories from former residents of Allen Benedict Court to retain some of the property's rich history. In its 80-year life, Allen Benedict Court has been home to some of the country's elite, including a Grammy Award-winning performer, corporate executives, national television celebrities, a host of doctors, lawyers, and NBA greats. So share your pictures, mementos, and memories at chcares at chasc.org. Coping with COVID, brought to you by the South Carolina Department of Health and Environmental Control, the City of Columbia Office of Business Opportunities, Columbia Housing Authority, Agape Counseling and Training Center, and Palmetto Media Connection. Coping. Coping with COVID with Trey Taylor. Fight the spread and take a stand against coronavirus. Wear a mask in public. Stay at least six feet apart from others and get tested. Join us and fight the spread. Visit scdhack.gov slash COVID-19. Happy Tuesday. I'm Trey Taylor and you're watching Coping with COVID, updates on the pandemic and information to help you thrive and survive COVID-19. Well, today we'll talk to a woman whose journey to work as a missionary and how you can also find your mission. Natasha Brown joins us. And then we'll talk to Curtis Caesar John about the Luminal Theater, entertaining and educating through film. Thank you both so much for joining us today. I'm looking forward to a great conversation. (laughs) Me too. Great. Great. Uh, That's coming up next. But first, your COVID community updates. As you may know by now, Will Muschamp is out as head coach of the Gamecocks football team. A.D. Ray Tanner said it was a difficult decision, but it just came down to the numbers. The team is two and five this year, coming off three straight losses. Offensive coordinator Mike Bobo, who said he feels he let Muschamp down, stepped in as interim coach. He, in turn, hired the winningest quarterback in Gamecock history, Connor Shore to the assistant coach position. Many of the players took their dismay to social media and defensive back J.C. Horn left the team to prepare for the NFL draft. Muschamp is set to receive $13.2 million in a buyout paid annually in installments. Richland School District 2 has canceled all of its in-person classes next week. November 23rd and 24th will be e-learning days and in-person teaching will resume on Monday, November 30th. Now the district says they're concerned about the number of students and staff having to quarantine and also say contract tracing may be more challenging by the holiday. Meanwhile, at least 12 teachers have resigned from the district citing concerns of contracting COVID. Free testing is available at the district office from 10 a.m. until 4 p.m. every day next week except Thursday. And Lee County is changing the names of the four schools named in honor of Confederate General Robert E. Lee. Leaders say while they can't change the name of the county, they can give the schools a new name to better reflect the population. A committee is charged with coming up with new names that have some historical reference. SCD Heck and Prisba Health have your most up-to-date lists of times, dates, and location for COVID testing in and around South Carolina. Check the screen for more information, and it will be scrolling throughout the show. You also get information about organizing a COVID screening at your event or in your neighborhood. And the DHEC Care Line. Now, the DHEC Care Line can give you information about COVID testing and also if you need transportation to a COVID test. Now, speaking of transportation, if you are unable to uh, get transported, or if you're immobile and you live in Richland or Clarendon counties, those paramedics are actually doing in-home COVID tests. So call 911 during the times that you see right there on the screen. Now, 
Uh, Richland County, uh, well, Costco has updated their mask policy. Everyone, even children and those with a medical condition must have a face covering to enter Costco. GM is hiring 3,000 and many of those positions are virtual. Visit the GM career site for information. You can see that information right there. CVS is also hiring in-store pharmacists and people to work from home. Visit the CVS website for information. Now, the South Carolina Bar Association and SC Legal Services have collaborated to offer a toll-free number and website for anyone that needs rent and mortgage help. And the City of Columbia continues their six-month payment plan for anyone who needs it. They also have payment assistance available up to 75%. Now, do you need help with virtual learning or schooling? Well, visit Rashonda Pratt's YouTube page. She joined us a couple of months ago. She's got some incredible resources and has dedicated an entire YouTube page to virtual learning and schooling. All right. So listen, Coping with COVID is streaming live on the TaylorMade production page over on Facebook. Would you go over there and hit like and share? We would love for you to do that. Not only will you uh, be able to watch Coping with COVID Monday through Saturday at 2 p.m., you can get all of your COVID-related updates. We're also streaming live on YouTube. Want to say hi to all of you YouTubers. Thank you so much for joining us. And please go over on uh, Instagram and also like and follow us there. You're watching Coping with COVID, updates on the pandemic and information to help you thrive and survive COVID-19. Today, we're talking to Natasha Brown. She, you may remember, she was with us several months ago uh, when we did a book, uh, a story about writing and publishing a book. The best-selling author, publisher, Bible teacher, and missionary is a highly sought after communications and consultant and book coach with a niche for innovative storytelling through her company, a publishing company. Her mission in all aspects of her life is to build the kingdom of God by spreading the love of Christ. And she does that through her 10 Blessings nonprofit organization, which advocates for domestic violence survivors, uh, one, one of which she is herself. And we who dwell faith community, which hosts a weekly prayer meeting and podcast. Natasha T. Brown, thank you so much for joining us today, beautiful. Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. So listen, uh, we talked a little bit, like I said before, uh, several months ago when you came. But for those who may not know, how did you get into writing and publishing? So I've always been a writer, literally, since I was a child. Um, and, you know, I worked as a professional writer in the communications industry, as a journalist, as a marketing associate and a publicist for a long time. And then it took a tragedy to get me into the publishing industry. You know, I was trying to heal and I was so mad and bitter at, you know, just being betrayed and yeah. all the things that I went through at that point in my life. And I prayed to the Lord and I said, how can I get through this? Like, what do you want me to do? I can't live like this anymore. Yeah. And he told me to write. And I was like, well, I always write, but okay, fine. So I thought <laughs> I was writing a hate letter about everybody who, you know, did me wrong. And, and I was so upset. And what turned out, you know, that actually turned out to be my first book. He began to reveal that journey that I went through at that point um, in the form of blessings. So that turned yeah. into my first book, 10 Blessings of Betrayal, which turned into people reading that book and asking me to help them with their books. And that sort of launched me into publishing, book coaching and co-authoring books. For those who may not know, can you just give us a quick synopsis of some of the things you did go through? You mentioned it earlier. Yes. Yeah, so I'm definitely a domestic violence survivor. Um, and in that relationship, you know, just being in the wrong place at the wrong time, it led me to being wrongfully accused of several felony crimes with someone attacked my ex at that time. And he and I was there. I tried to stop it. And those people ended up framing me for basically attempted murder. So I was fighting for my life and my freedom for about five, uh, nine months. And, you know, eventually, definitely I was, um, you know, they found me not guilty. They ended yeah. up dropping the charges. Uh, but during that time, I went through a lot of isolation and depression and social anxiety. And so, again, I was just at a point where I was so broken and upset and bitter. And I had to pray and just, um, you know, ask God to heal me. 
Yeah, we're talking to uh, Natasha Brown. Uh, she is a, a publisher, a missionary, and a, a best-selling uh, writer and book coach. And uh, we're talking about uh, her mission. And uh, you ended up becoming a missionary. Now, why did you want to do that? And what does that mean to be a missionary, Natasha? Because we hear that and we throw out you know, that term around. And, and while you did do mission work overseas, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but um, sometimes you don't even have to leave your community to be a missionary. So first, let's talk about what is mission work and then why you wanted to become one. Yeah, so missions is pretty much sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with the purpose of, um, you know, people receiving him and sharing the love of Christ um, so that people will be saved. You know, the mission of God is to seek and save the lost, to save the world, to bring us all into, you know, his big family. And so as a missionary, missionaries are sent ones. They um, they go and, you know, they proclaim the gospel. And, you know, we can live on mission here. Yeah you know, domestically at home. And um, that's often, um, so if everyone's a missionary, no one's a missionary, but we can all live on mission, right? Yes, and so yes. living on mission mean, means, you know, being on purpose and, and what yes. God has called you to do. And God has called us all to do something to contribute to the Great Commission, which is to, um, you know, seek and save the lost, teach everyone about Jesus, baptize in his name, right? And, and teach them everything that he has taught us. And so we can all do that with our specific platforms. We have to love, you know, we have to share the message of Christ. We can't be afraid yeah. or intimidated by people, you know, when we have that opportunity, because everyone does need that message. Um, but even if they don't receive it, we are still responsible for loving, for giving, for helping, and for um, just showing the agape love of God wherever we go. And so I was a missionary and I was sent to Tanzania, East Africa. And you asked me what made me want to become a missionary. Well, I, I went through a seminary program and through that program, I learned that, you know, not many missionaries, you know, not many people want to be missionaries overseas. Um, in addition to that, not many who are missionaries overseas are in what's called unreached people are, are, are reaching people who can't be reached by the gospel. So right. close countries. And I really wanted to contribute to that and be, you know, part of the 3% that went to a closed country to serve the Lord and to really, you know, share the love of Christ. And so I was in Israel uh, one month and in 2018. And it was such a profound, uh, it had such a profound impact on me. And, you know, it just made me want to be there among people who didn't know Christ and who wanted to serve. I mean, who, you know, who I could share that message with. We're talking to Natasha uh, Brown, Living on Mission. You know, you said something that I wanted to expound on a little bit, Natasha, before we get to the next question, that um, everyone can be on mission. You know, you don't have to travel to be a missionary. And I truly believe that we all have a purpose and we can use, I believe the creator gives us all specific gifts and talents that we can utilize then to do mission work, to be a missionary, to, as you said, spread the love of and the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, so many times we're looking for something that's right there. You know, uh, you know, for instance, you're you're a book writer, a publisher. Not only do you are able to write and express yourself through words, you're able to help other people. And I was going to ask you this earlier. You know, you're able to help other people really um, achieve their goals, achieve their mission so to speak. You know, Absolutely. I'm here in in, um, in in media. We'll talk to uh, Curtis John uh, later and, and he's on mission. We're all on purpose, for purpose. We've just got to recognize that we need to um, operate in our gift mm -hmm. to do what the Lord would have us to do. Yeah, absolutely. And realizing that the gift isn't just for us, you know, yes. God gave us a gift like we are his, right? These are really his gifts and he gave them to us, their gifts, right? That we are able to receive and 
and use and make our lives better and help other people. And we really have to remember that. So in everything that we do, we're going to be connecting with people, you know, and in those connections, in those conversations, in those interactions, we have an opportunity to leave an impression. We have an opportunity to share a message. And so we can choose to share God. We can choose to share hope, to share love, to share salvation in what we do. And so I'm just so blessed that God has has allowed me to have this publishing company, Elohi International Publishing and Media. And it is a Christ-centered publishing and media company with um, that works with kingdom-minded visionaries to produce mission-centered stories. And so we're, we're sharing the gospel through books, you know, or sharing God's redemption, you know, how he redeemed um, people through, through those stories. And so he gives us all a way to do that and to be on mission for him. Well, talking about books, you have a young new book out. It's called Absence of Excess, uh, Stories on Culture, Immersion, Godly Love, and Living Surrendered from a Black American Missionary in Africa. Tell us about that. Oh, man, that is, um, this book is, oh, goodness. It's a, a several stories that will really just take you into East Africa in the village where I serve, um, the village of Bulima, which is right on the coast of Lake Victoria, the largest lake in Africa. It's such a beautiful village. You're gonna meet the people, meet, um, get accustomed to African culture, learn about how they love the hospitality. And while I was there, the Lord really was just speaking to me about my own life um, with Christ, but also the Western church. and. It's called the absence of excess because it poses the question, is our excess hurting us in our relationship with God or is it helping us? And so we go through different scenarios that I experienced in the village and um, really is Holy Spirit inspired. He really just brings out questions like, do we have too much excess? Are we bringing too much baggage um, along in our seasons with God? You know, when he shifts us from one season to the next, are we bringing along too much baggage? And so the Lord had me learn these lessons with these interesting scenarios. You know, we talk about a lot about love and fellowship and people. Are we hospitable? Do we have an open door to people? Because God often works through that, the hospitality of believers, you know, are we closed door policy or open door policy? So the, the this book has several different stories that really take you one into the village where I served in Africa, but two, it takes you on a spiritual journey of your own to really assess your spiritual life with God and to see, you know, where there's room to sort of get closer to him by removing some of the distractions of the world. Yeah, Natasha A. Brown, T. Brown is uh, joining us. We're talking about living on mission. So uh, how is uh, being a missionary of color different? So historically, the missionary culture is a pretty much Caucasian, uh, you know, when, when people think about missionaries, they think about Caucasians, many um Caucasian men uh, going over. And a lot of time missionaries are affiliate or associated with atrocities that happened in Africa and slavery and all of that. And so when I went to Africa and East Africa, many people had never even met an African-American person before. Wow. So many black people, African people that I lived with, that I lived near, they when they met me, they're like, like, look, like, where are you from? Right. How did you get here? And wow. when I would say I was a missionary or introduce myself as a missionary, it's like, you're not Caucasian. Like, you're not right. a, a right. Rafuzi, which is you're, a, Yeah, you're not what we are used to seeing as missionaries. And it's almost like, you know, I hate to see this, white folks coming to the rescue. That's the, that is the thing. It's like, and, and you know, I have a conversation in this book um, with um, some Tanzanians and they are Tanzanians and they're here. It's a husband and wife, doctors uh, of education here mm -hmm. in America. And they talk a lot about that in one of the chapters in the book. And I have a chapter called The, the West Does Not Save the Rest. And then I have a mm -hmm. chapter on economy and missions. And so they talk a lot about, we need to change that because just because like, 
white people aren't the only saviors for <laughs> Africa. And so right, that, right. that idea has been perpetuated through the missionary culture and just and also through the media for decades that, you know, white people will save Africa. And so um, even just being someone of a different color going and serving, the representation matters. And so I am on a mission to really, you know, try to inspire more black and brown people to go to Africa Africa and serve there and live there and to be amongst um, immersed in the culture. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to ask you, is that one of the reasons why you think African-Americans should become more missionaries? What is the process in becoming a missionary? So everyone has a different process. You know, um, it definitely starts out of a um, you know, you're pulled, your heart is pulled and you will have a heart for the nations and a heart for God and his people. And then it's birthed out of prayer. You know, missionary assignment is birthed out of prayer and, and really just hearing from the Lord about where he's calling you to go. And um, everyone has a different process. I happen to go with um, a missions agency. You know, when I came back from Israel, I knew that God was calling me overseas. I was also taking some missions courses at the time. And so I immediately started to reach out to different missions agencies because at the time the church that I was in weren't they weren't sending missionaries overseas by themselves but my church then did support me like heavily uh but they weren't sending so I was like I need to go now like mm -hmm. I need to get like need I need to know what's up and I didn't want to go by myself because I was new and I didn't know anything about the missions field so I found a reputable missions agency organization and, you know, they trained me, you know, we had orientation. They interviewed me. First of all, they checked my references, checked my credentials. Um, I sent in a resume and then it goes out to the field and then people, the different uh, stations begin to reach out and say, we want her here. We want her here. We can use her here. Okay. And, you know, after a few of those, I, I, I got the assignment for Tanzania and I said, I think this might be it because the Lord had already begun to speak to me about my specific assignment on the mission field and the timing of it. And so I began to pray about it and he started to confirm that for me in several different ways that it was Tanzania that I was called to. So as you said, there are mission organizations, so to speak, to kind of help you. But then, of course, people can also either one, as you say, go to their church or go through their church. Yes. Yeah. Many churches have um, a mission teams. And so a lot of times they'll do short mission trips uh, to different parts of the world. And so that is definitely something I would recommend because oftentimes short term mission trips develop a hunger for long term missions. Yeah. So definitely if you should, you know, start with the short term trips, if your church has a, is going someplace, you can check them out and see if it fits, if you can also go. If not, there are several mission organizations that help mobilize missionaries. And if you are interested, you can definitely reach out to me and I'll send you the name of some different mission organizations right that right. mobilize missionaries. And there are some that specifically mobilize African-American missionaries. Right. Well, you can see um, uh, Natasha's information on the screen. So as she said, if you want more information about mission work or being a missionary, please uh, reach out to her. So uh, tell me, uh, what did you learn during your mission trip to Tanzania? I'm sure you, you learned you had to give you something as much as you gave something. Absolutely. And that's the thing. Missions, cross-cultural missions is like a two-way um, yeah two-way conversion almost. I, I don't think of the name of the, the word that I'm thinking of, but I learned so much. Number one, I learned that my love walk was not perfected at that mm. time. You know, I thought I was a very loving person, but really when I got there, the Lord was like, he showed me what it meant to love by mm -hmm. giving me people who loved with like their whole heart, you know, with every, they will give their last, you know? And so yes. one, I learned how to love better and what love looks like. You know, we say, I love you a lot in America and in the West, you know, we always throw that word around, but love is really action. And the Bible yes. tells us that love is laying down our lives for our friends. Yes. Yes, so it's yes. like the motto of love is Jesus, what he did. He literally laid his life down. And so if we can't sit there and say, hey, I'm laying down my life every day, I'm choosing to die 
to myself, my own yeah. flesh every day to love my brothers and sisters, we aren't really loving in a godly manner. We don't have that godly love. So one, I learned what that looked like and 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 what that meant for me. You know, how how do how can I love better? Um, I learned the importance of hospitality, of um, packing lightly, you know, not just physically, but also yeah. emotionally. emotionally. Yeah. yeah, because and God taught me that lesson. The first chapter of this book is called Pack Light, and it's the journey of how I went from America to Africa. And I experienced something so traumatic with my luggage just because I did not pack light. And when I got to Africa, the Lord just downloaded it into me like you need to pack light. You have to be fluid. You have to be ready to just up and go. When I call you, you can't worry about trying to make yourself safe. You know, when Jesus sent his disciples, he told them not to take anything. Don't even take an extra pair of clothes. Don't take an extra tunic. Don't worry about what you're going to eat or drink. And he said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Okay. So that had been my favorite verse for so long. But in Africa, it really gave me a new context to that verse, to that scripture, because I took all of these Western luxuries with me in an attempt to make myself comfortable mm -hmm. in Africa. OK, and so the Lord was like, no, daughter, you don't need to worry about that. I got you. And I when I was there, it's like I didn't need any of that stuff. The, my neighbors wanted to cook for me. My neighbors wanted me to come over and they wanted to show me how to make their foods. They wanted to make dresses for me. They wanted to do my hair like I went and got braids before I went to Africa. <laughs> And, you know, I have neighbors who could have just braided my hair. They, <laughs> yeah. like, I literally tried to do everything I could to prepare myself for a journey that God was taking me on. Yeah. And one of the biggest lessons is if God sends us someplace, if God gives us a calling, a purpose, a, an assignment, he has it all taken care of. We can simply trust him. Ma'am, you're preaching today. <laughs> that is so true and that is so good. And um, I'm thinking about so many things. One, uh, you know, that piece about love. We do have baggage, particularly when it comes to love. I mean, I know you had a, a, a failed love story, so to speak. And, and many of us obviously have lost in love. Um, you know, romantic love. And so we do shut down our hearts mm -hmm. and our minds and our spirits to freely give. I'm sitting here thinking of, you know, the Lord blessed me with a two-year-old and a four-year-old to help mm -hmm. raise. And I thought about, I've been thinking about this a lot, but especially this morning, how um, God is teaching or retaught me how to truly unselfishly love, even yeah. when you may not like what a person does or like what their actions are, just to truly love. And these two little babies have truly taught me that patience mm -hmm. and love, you know, yeah. and, um, and and it is those experience. It are mm -hmm. it is those experience that um, that that help us because, as you said, just like God gave me these children, He He sent you on His trip. I think about our next guest, and and I don't know what he's going to say, but I know you know He the Spirit gave him the idea to teach and inspire and educate through film. You know, mm -hmm. so. When you are given these God ideas, uh, these God assignments, as you said, you've got to just trust that he's going to take you and give you whatever you need. Seek ye first, as you yeah. said. Seek yeah. ye first. Uh, Natasha Brown joins us. Please continue to post and share this information out so we can get this uh, message to the masses. I know um, you've got some great memories. We've got a couple of more, a uh, couple of minutes before we have to let you go. But tell us about some of your memories. Do you do you have some pictures and video that you want to share? Or you weren't able yeah. to get it. Out? I'll share my screen. Let's see if I can share um, some videos. Oh my goodness. I had some amazing times in Africa. Um, this picture right here, I, I got to an opportunity to minister to the women's chapel um, and the women's program. And so you see they have their babies and, and the children there too. And this, I, I hosted a fellowship of women in my front of uh, my living room. <laughs> So this was our welcome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
I just think every black person need to go to Africa, girl. Yes. I'm, this is my living room. I'm so cold right now. women and children in my living room. <laughs> yeah. And they just throwing down. You know what I'm saying? They just do what they do. Yes, yes. So those are some of the um, yeah. the memories. Um, you know, so many things happened there. And, uh, oh, I could go on and on and show tons and tons of pictures. But those are two things that really stuck out to me while I was there. It's just the fellowship with the, with the women and children and, and the men, yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> differences. What are some of the differences and similarities between churches here and in Africa? So all, you know, Africa is so big. So the spirituality is different depending on where you are. Right. So where I was, um, you know, they worship with like that type of dancing and music. If it's in Swahili, but if it's in English, it is, you know, hymnals. It is the oh old God. school hymnals. So I really, you know, got connected, reconnected with hymnals that I heard, you know, growing up in the Baptist oh, church. Oh, wow. Wow. So, um, you know, church is different. You know, sometimes churches outside, you know, I, I remember a pastor coming to our house and asking, like, could we help him? Because there was a big storm that blew off the roof and half of the building in the church and the pastors there, they built their own churches. Like, you know, they're called to the pastor and they're in a denomination where I served, but they'll build their own churches. They'll raise the money. So, you know, they will go through any means necessary to spread the gospel. And, and one final thing that really touched me is how they feel about spreading the gospel. On Sundays, the student ministers who I worked with, they would go to church and then after church, they would go to the houses in the surrounding village if people weren't at church and they would minister and oh, share wow. the gospel and they will find out what's wrong. Why weren't you at Why church? Why weren't you at church? Yeah. And, they, and through that experience, they ended up learning about their neighbors in the villages and they end up oftentimes leading some people to salvation. And so it's like that outreach is so dead. They're dedicated to outreach. They don't just sit there and wait for people to come in church. <laughs> That's great. Natasha Brown with uh, Elohi. Is that how you can pronounce it? Elohi. Elohi mm -hmm. of Publishing. Thank you so much. That is, oh man, that's just so great. Uh, C. Denise Duke says, it's truly a great experience. And Mitchell Peace George N. says, praise the Lord. Thank you, ladies, so much for joining us. Please continue to post and share this information out so that um, uh, we can get this message to the masses because uh, Natasha really is on a mission to help people do more missions, particularly African-Americans. And if you need more information, I think we've got her information on the screen. And don't forget about her uh, brand new book uh, that is called The Absence of Excess, which, where she talks about her uh, mission trip. So uh, please contact her and check that out. Natasha, thank you so much for joining us today. You have just been such um, so inspirational, so motivational just to help us figure out um, you know, what our mission is and how we can walk in our mission, living on mission. Thank you so Thank much for joining us me. today. I appreciate it. God bless you. God bless you too, sweetheart. Uh, speaking of living on mission, our next guest had a mission to inform, educate, and inspire, and he uses a different way to do it. We'll talk to a Curtis Caesar John coming up next on Coping with COVID. I'm Trey Taylor. Coping with COVID is brought to you by the South Carolina Department of Health and Environmental Control. Visit scdheck.gov for an updated list of testing sites and important information on how to protect yourself, your family, and friends from the coronavirus. SCDHEC, healthy people, healthy communities. Also, the City of Columbia Office of Business Opportunities, helping to meet the needs of small, minority, and women-owned businesses in the City of Columbia. Log on to columbiasc.net backslash OBO. Agape Counseling and Training Center. Call 803-779-2777 for licensed professionals of counselors and social workers helping families, engaged and married couples and individuals of all ages gain an understanding of all aspects of their life. If you're having a challenge coping with COVID, contact Agape Counseling and Training Center at agapects.com. And Columbia Housing Authority. The agency is looking for stories from former residents of Allen Benedict Court to retain some of the property's rich history. In its 80-year life, Allen Benedict 
Benedict Court has been home to some of the country's elite, including a Grammy Award-winning performer, corporate executives, national television celebrities, a host of doctors, lawyers, and NBA greats. So share your pictures, mementos, and memories at chcares at chasc dot org. Coping with COVID, brought to you by the South Carolina Department of Health and Environmental Control, the City of Columbia Office of Business Opportunities, Columbia Housing Authority, Agape Counseling and Training Center, and Palmetto Media Connection. Coping. Coping with COVID with Trey Taylor. Palmetto Media Connections, connecting media and communities together. Established in 2010 with past national media guests like Janice Huff, Mitch Faulkner, and Dolores Washington, and local celebs like Cynthia Hardy, Miranda Parnell, Vaughn Gaskin, Kevin Cohen, Vanzel Hare, and Makita Pearson, and hosted by Darcy Strickland and Tony G. Palmetto Media Connections in the past has distributed to the community over $1,000 in gift cards. Connect with us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Palmetto Media Connections. Connect the media and communities together. People will be able to look 100 years from now. They will know how we got over. This makes it even more important that we shine this light. Part of it also wasn't the fact that we couldn't have the physical graduation, but I also couldn't celebrate with my family out of town. For me, I feel like this is a new normal. This is not going in a, a way anytime soon, I don't think. Anything that's happened before can happen again. And the same thing is at play with this virus. You know, we are no longer in a building, and we've talked about church being, you know, with us, in us. Have you traveled abroad late in the past six months? You know, we were trying to trace it back as early as November. You're watching Coping with COVID, updates on the pandemic and information to help you thrive and survive COVID-19. I'm Trey Taylor. I want to remind you to please go over to uh, the TaylorMade production page and uh, like and share that on Facebook, on Instagram, and please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, please continue to post and share this out even after the broadcast so we can get this great information to the masses. I want to say hi to uh, everyone watching and everyone on the replay. So our next guest is actually helping people thrive and survive during COVID-19. He brought back an old school way to enjoy movies while seeking to educate and inspire viewers of color through film. Curtis Caesar John with Luminel Theater. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate uh, you providing this platform for Columbia and for everybody. Uh, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> so listen, how did you get the idea to launch Luminal? Because you guys were doing this before COVID. Yeah. Um, so I have a background in film programming that's really just about putting on film festivals and different types of film events, whether they be film series, one-offs, blah, blah, blah. Um, and, and this was mostly done primarily in New York, where I'm originally from in Brooklyn to be okay. even more specific. And I found that there was a disconnect between what like film festivals were doing and how filmmakers were able to like continue the life of their films. Cause what happens is, you know, the work I show is from independent filmmakers. So it's not like Hollywood stuff, like a Tyler Perry or whomever, um, or mostly independent stuff. As um, So we decided to form the Luminal to really like help be that disconnect to like really bring the films that these black independent filmmakers are making and connecting them with their community members, connecting oh. them with their neighbors. Right. Um, especially in a place like, you know, we, we centered our original activities in Bedford Stuyvesant, in Brooklyn, which um, for the viewers who don't know, is like really a, like akin to Harlem. Yeah, um, yeah. Brooklyn, uh, for Brooklyn, it sounded like a, a real mecca for black artists and filmmakers definitely fall within that. And so, with so many filmmakers being centered there, we're like, let's center our activities there um, to begin. And, you know, we just kind of really took off from there, just like really providing um, film services with so many people and just being able to like show their work from filmmakers like all around Brooklyn, actually all, technically all around the world. Yeah, yeah. So you get this idea, so you were doing this in New York and then you moved to Columbia. Yes. Now, why did you come here? <laughs> I, I, don't, I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Did you come here? Now, what made you move to South Carolina? <laughs> well, um, my my wife's family is from down here. Okay, okay. And um, she was born, she was uh, raised down here, born nearby, born in Anderson. Okay. 
Yeah. And um, and so you know, we decided to like relocate, and you know, both of us work from home, and we're able to like have our businesses. So my with the Lumino and her with her business to um, to work remotely even before COVID. Mm -hmm. um, and so we actually moved down here full time last year in 2019, and just like continued doing our great work in different places, like mostly at sometimes going up and down the Eastern Seaboard, back and forth to New York and Columbia. But um, I like Columbia, you know, it's a great little town. And I do too. I mean, there's, I mean, a, there's a lot of good opportunities down here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mitchell Peace Joy Jen says everyone asks why South Carolina, <laughs> but, but you know what? The 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 migration of particularly mm. African Americans is you know it was from the south to the north and then from the north back to the south yep yep you know? so you had a relationship so you said you know in new york you had a relationship with film uh as a teacher and even as you said connecting communities but what about the source of inf inspiration because that's what is intriguing to me curtis about Lumino theater you are really uh seeking to inspire motivate people through film so they could see themselves and, and what the possibilities are. I mean, yeah, you hit it right on the head with the, the possibilities. And, and a term I like to use is like really help them raise the imaginations of her, you know, yeah. what our communities can be and what they can be personally. Um, and then also just to be able to like interact with and be with and, and see the work of filmmakers that look like them, yeah. that, create, that create for them, um, that often create if not in the places where they live, in places that are very much like him. Mm -hmm. So like whether that is rural or wherever that it is a very urban center, I mean, it's reflected right in, um, it's reflected right in their face from when they're viewing these films because, you know, these films speak for them. Right. We're talking to uh, Curtis Caesar John. He is with the uh, Lumino Theater and uh, they are doing some amazing things actually in our community and just recently started uh, expanding to do some outdoor uh, drive-in theater kind of things. Tell us uh, why you thought to do that. Well, I mean, you know, with COVID happening and everything and, you know, I, I'm and I know we're going to talk about this a bit more later, but I, I'm a big cinephile. So even, I mean, yes, I do work in film, but I'm is that racist. what they call people who love movie cinephiles? Yeah, the people who are like really, <laughs> really into it, you know, or movie nerds. You can say yeah, that if you want to yeah, be less pejorative, but but <laughs> but yeah. Um, and but so combined with that, and really just wanted to provide like a great resource and yeah. sense of I don't want to say hope, but a sense of of a better or bigger sense of community. Um, among citizens out here, and particularly in Northeast area, um, right. where a lot of the arts is not really prioritized. Mm. I mean, people expect you know, citizens here to go all, always go downtown to access right. the arts. Right. And people don't really go downtown. I mean, Black folks especially don't really necessarily want to go downtown. I mean, for historical reasons and for contemporary reasons uh, to absorb art. I mean, they do, but they don't as often as they could. So why not provide those resources? right in the center of where people are. And that's what Illumino did, has done from the beginning anyway. So no matter if we're doing that in Brooklyn or Columbia or in Charlotte or wherever we're doing right. it, um, that's what we center around anyway. So that's where the inspiration really came to like, uh, just really do these drive-ins and, and have something safe, right? right. right. Have something safe for people to be able to um, enjoy uh, films made for them by them. So in your quest to uh, motivate, inform, enlighten, educate through film. Is there a kind of a follow up after the movie? What happens? So we definitely stay in touch with our um, with Patreon. all our audience members and such. Mm -hmm. And um, we actually have a, a another drive in that we're going to be doing in two weeks um, that we can announce today. Um, it hasn't been made public yet, but we can announce that. Awesome. Um, whenever you're ready for me too. But uh, um, <laughs> um, but. Yeah, we we you can definitely join our mailing list, and that way you stay informed about everything that we're doing. You can join us on social media. Uh, we post a decent amount, um, <laughs> and so you'll definitely be able to be not only be educated within, you know, what the different things we're doing in film, but what other people are doing in film as well. Because um, it's not just about what we provide; it's also about the resources that other artists and and creatives um, put out there for the community and such. Yeah. Uh, I, I do want to emphasize one thing. Yeah. is that I think what was really important about us doing these drive-ins is that we made sure to 
um, and like I said, this is how Illumina operates anyway. Um, we made sure to have a film before the feature films would be shown, because we showed The Wiz and we showed The Last Dragon, which technically are Hollywood films. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, 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 but we had short films from local filmmakers that were shown um, before each film. Oh, cool. And that cool. was key because we want to make sure, as I said earlier, we wanted to make sure that um, people are connected with the filmmakers that are either from or living in their community. So it was funny, in the first film, um, when we showed The Wiz, we had a filmmaker, um, Joseph Michael jo Micah Johnson, who's from Columbia, but actually is living in Brooklyn and grad school right now, which is oh. funny because like how I moved from Brooklyn and to yes. Columbia, he's in <laughs> Columbia and moved Brooklyn, but it was just really cool. He's the cinematographer for that first film we had shown, um, Cuidate. Um, and then for the second film, it was um, Makia Green, um, who grew up in Lower Richland, uh, but lives and works in uh, Columbia area, um, teaching and educating and making films of her own. Right. And so that, that's, it's key. I mean, we have to connect the filmmakers, the artists who live and work and are inspired by this community and um, and their neighbors, because a lot of times there's that disconnect, like I spoke about earlier. Yeah, people just yeah. don't know who are the people that are doing these fantastic work. This fantastic work, and they're doing it for y'all. Yeah. Right? They're doing it for, yeah. for the public. For, for the they're public, not, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they're not just doing it for their um, self-gratification, you know, so. Right. So are you accepting films from uh, local, uh, amateur um absolutely filmmakers always always okay, okay. Uh, my thing is even if because we're looking to do so many more things out of here so even if it's something that can't necessarily be shown in the drive-in it would be something that we can show at another time right with something else i mean it could technically still be in the drive-in but there's there's numerous opportunities for those films to be shown um right. so no we encourage it so yeah thank you for uh, posting the website i mean they can um, find they can go to the website or they can um, email us and just send us their work and you know we'll definitely be in touch with them about um, showing it in the future. Yeah, awesome. Mitchell Peace Joy Jen um, wants to know more information. And we're going to get to that, uh, Mitchell. She said she thinks it's a wonderful idea. I did too, Mitchell. When I found out about it, and I inboxed Curtis. I was like, "Oh, that's this is very cool. Let me, uh, you know, get you on the show." And I'm so glad that we were able to connect. So, how do you decide what movies? And and this goes to your what did you call you a cinematog? What did you call yourself? Uh, cinephile. <laughs> cinephile. Cinephile. Okay. But also, you know, I, I've been doing film programming for 12 years now too. I, I still can't believe that's the number, um, <laughs> but I've been doing it for 12 years now. And so, you know, between me and my team, I mean, there's just so many films that we come across, um, Hollywood or otherwise, that um, just feel that they should get even more emphasis and even greater notice. Um, the films that we show, so The Wiz is universally known, of course, oh, by yeah. the black community. You gotta ease on so we, yeah, 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 exactly, right? Oh, oh. Always. And so, it's been a brand new day. I mean. Yeah, you know what's funny? I wish. I mean, uh, yes, you know, it's driving. I wish we could have kind of done like a sing along for certain yes, parts. That would have yes. been nice. Hopefully, in the future, we can bring it back and do something like that um, live, um, yes. where people can be with each other. But people were still with each other, and you can see people dancing and singing in their cars and stuff. So I mean, it was cool. people had a good time. Because um, movies, Curtis, and I don't have to tell you this, movies are such a, uh, it's like music, because I'm a music person, like you are to, I don't know what we call music files, I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> but music and film is such a connector. It's one of those things, which is why I got into radio. You can hear one song and a million people yes. have a reaction that is you similar and uniquely mm -hmm. theirs yes, yes. at the same time. You know, I just saw uh, my niece in New York posted uh, um, something on Facebook a couple of days ago about what's your favorite line from uh, coming to America. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Yeah. Well, what, what, what line do you find yourself saying just a normal conversation? And just to see, you know, that kind of thing you know, it just keys you into what that connection that we have. And, you know, and as people of color, we're so uh, colorful, <laughs> so, so full, you know, so, um, so, so what, what, so yeah, so I know you're a movie buff, you love the movies, you're, you, you know, you're deciding. So let's make the announcement. When is the next one? And what is the movie? Um, the next one is going to be December 4th. December 4th. Yep. And um, it is going to be The Preacher's Wife. Oh, that'll be good. Whitney exactly. Houston. I'm sorry. Isn't that and then that Whitney Houston? 
Yeah, when, when Houston, yeah, Denzel Washington. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be great. December 4th. And where is it going to be held? It's going to be in the same spot. So we were right outside of Spotlight Cinemas, which is at a Columbia Mall area, um, right near the Meeting Church place. Yes, yes. Um, so yeah, so that's where we're going to be. So it's in a parking lot right outside of uh, Spotlight Cinemas, Capital 8. That is and, great. Um, People can just, you know, we'll be posting about it. Uh, we we didn't do any, we haven't started any marketing yet, but people can post. I mean, people can go to our, our social media pages or if they sign up for our mailing list, they'll get the emails right. and they will be able to RCP and, and join the fund. Now, is there, is there a cost, Curtis? No, we, um, we were able to get this underwritten. Um, we right. had two great sponsors, uh, Red Olive Creative Consulting and, uh, uh, South Carolina Humanities, That's and so great. they were able to uh, provide the cost for us to be able to do these for the first year, mm -hmm. um, and so we're able to put these on for free to the community. Amazing. So after December 4th, how many more will you do? We don't, we are not sure yet. Okay. okay. Um, we will be, you know, we're continuing to do uh, live streaming of, of different types of films, um, so, and we have something that coming up pretty significant that I can't announce yet. Uh, that'll be centered down here in the Columbia area as well. Okay. I'll be able to announce that um, probably within a month or so. Oh, good. You sign yeah. up for the memory list, you know? Um, yeah, so people can can uh, go to the website right yep. here. Or if we, uh, Lauren has your Facebook and IG information, Luminal mm -hmm. Theater. So people can uh, follow you, like you say, on social media, sign up for your website at luminaltheater.org. And then they'll, you know, continue to get the, the updates. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. So December 4th at a meeting place um, parking lot, the preacher's wife. Now, will there be a, a short uh, local or amateur or up and coming? We're filmmaker? working that out right okay. now. Okay. Yeah. okay. <laughs> All right. So anything yeah. else? So, so anything else that's going on with Luminal Theater that you can share? Oh, well, right now we're doing something really interesting. So uh, we're having virtual screenings of work from experimental filmmakers. Oh, cool. And so there, it's a series that we have called Black Docs, BLK Docs to be more specific. And um, we decided to do the series with another company that's actually located in Durham, North Carolina, Speller Street Films. Mm -hmm. And um, really to like center the focus on the work of directors, uh, on black directors of documentaries. Because unfortunately what happens a lot of times is there's a lot of documentaries that feature us Mm -hmm. um, and, and most of them well-meaning, to be fair, but they're not necessarily the ones that are heralded, let me put it that way, or not directed by Black. So, right, right, right. And, and it's difficult for you to know that because people don't, people barely pay attention, unfortunately, um, to who the filmmakers for certain documentaries are. It's just yeah. the reality of, you know, because it's yeah. not a Hollywood type thing, right? Right, right. Um, and so we wanted to make sure to center the work of those filmmakers. And so this is the fourth edition of Black Docs. And um, with this work, it's, it's filmmakers from all around America and, and a few that are, for, that are international as well. Um, and just like f seeing how they use the archive. So like using archival footage. So like uh, it can be home videos. It can be stuff from, you know, that was filmed 100 or 50, whatever years ago. And mm -hmm. seeing how they use that to, to explore Black identity. Right, right. And when is the next Black Doc? Oh, it's it's running right now. Oh, it's, it's running. running. Okay. Yeah, yeah, right now. Um, once again, they can go to our website to to see that information, and it's uh, be running through uh, November twenty sixth. Awesome. All right. So this is a uh, Curtis Caesar John with Luminal Theater. You see the uh, website. Please go to the website. Check it out. You'll find out about the Black Doc series, which uh, streams uh, film uh, experimental filmmakers uh, documentaries. And then uh, as uh, you see up on the screen, the next free drive in movie is December 4th at uh, 201 Columbia Mall Boulevard. It's going to be the preacher's wife. So get your family and friends in the car, get your popcorn and your um, raisinets and goobers. I like goobers. <laughs> hey. and, and oh, I, sh I should mention like, so the um, Spotlight Cinemas, it's going to be right outside that. And so that'll be open for people to get their concessions so they can oh, get cool. like their nice live hot popcorn. And, oh, that's know, so the, good. The movie, yeah, that is the, good. The movie raisinets and goobers and all that too. Um, and then, you know, obviously mask up when you leave your car and, you know, we say all that. We you, you, Oh, that's good. So the theater will actually be open. You can buy, purchase your snacks, go back yep. to your car, and mm -hmm. then enjoy the movie. Is it seven or eight or eight o'clock? What time? Um, we usually we usually begin at seven thirty. Okay. 
Awesome. Yeah. Curtis, thank you so much. I love, I love what you're doing. And um, I'm believing God that uh, you will get the funding to continue on even past COVID, because I think so many things that we are having to do, having to adjust to because of COVID are so innovative that they're going to become staples. Well, you know, you know, what's funny just very quickly. Yeah. So the Luminal always has our thing is about eliminating as many barriers to entry as possible right. for people to watch films. So um, we would set up on street corners, we would set up outside of businesses, oh, on wow. the side of a business, whatever, you know, and set up some chairs or or have people, I mean, so many different places where people can just come in, enjoy, access movies, stay as long as you like, yeah. you know, hopefully stay the entirety of this, but <laughs> still, you know, um, but stay as long as you like and just be able to access these things. So that's, we've always been, innovative in making sure that that black folks especially are able to see the films that are made for them and by them. Mm -hmm. um, and so this was just another step in that whole process for us. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I can say that proudly that, you know, a lot of things that a lot of other businesses are doing that we've done and we're kind of, you know, um, looked down upon for being so community centered in right. our, um, in our mission. And, but now everyone is kind of doing it and innovating right. in that way. So, so we're just continuing the innovation really, you know, right. which right. is a beautiful thing. It is a beautiful thing. It's amazing. It's amazing. Curtis Caesar, John, it was such a pleasure talking to you today. Thank you so much for joining us. Good luck to you. God bless uh, your efforts. And like I said, I don't know if you heard me tell our first guest, Natasha, you're on your mission. Absolutely. You're on mission. Mm -hmm. That yeah. was very inspirational. Um, thank you for having her on too. I mean, that, yeah. that was fantastic. So thank it you. Was, yeah, and I, I did hear that. It was, it was yeah, great. I was about to shout out my chair because <laughs> <laughs> you know, we are on mission. We're on purpose for purpose. We've just got to key into what our God-given gifts are and stop and start moving in with the spirit and in the wave instead of pushing away from it. Absolutely. You know, times I think we push away from the current of our lives. So. Absolutely. I mean, you, I don't need to say anything else. You said it perfectly. <laughs> Curtis, thank you so much for joining us today. Good luck to you. God bless. And I have a great afternoon. Thank you. You too, Troy. Absolutely. Thank you so much. All right. So again, Curtis, Caesar, John, uh, you see uh, his information, Lauren, if you could throw it back up there on the screen, don't forget to go to luminaltheater.org or follow them on social media so you can find out all about the amazing things they're doing. And don't forget December 4th, The Preacher's Wife outside of Columbia Place Small, The Meeting Place Church. As he said, I love it. Go in, get your popcorn and your goobers and your raisinets, and then go back out to your car and check out the movie. Get all your family and friends together. Mitchell Peace, Joy Jen says, uh, to God be the glory for all the great things that he has done. Amen and amen, sis. Listen, if you've got a story that can help someone cope with COVID, why don't you go over to uh, my Facebook page, Taylor May Productions, and inbox me. I'd love to get the story on the air. If you have a product or service that could help someone cope with COVID, please uh, email copingwithtraytaylor at gmail.com. And uh, we would love to uh, talk to you about how to be a proud sponsor of Coping with COVID, just like In It Together, the uh, City of Columbia Office of Business Opportunities, Agape Counseling and Training Center, and Palmetto Media Connections. Now, tomorrow, um, Wellness Wednesday, we're going to have the man cave conversations. Rick Henry with WIS TV, State Representative Terry Alexander, Dr. Thaddeus Bell and Bishop Arnold Williams. I'm trying to get my producer, Lauren Grant, to um, join us. Uh, that's uh, tomorrow on uh, Coping with COVID. And then Thursday, uh, Native American Awareness Month with uh, Marcy Hayden and Vernell Edwards with the five ways to change your life for the better. That and more coming up on Coping with COVID. As usual, I leave you with a reading from Jesus Calling. Today, Jesus says, there is no condemnation for those who are in me. The law of the spirit of life has set you free from the law of sin and death. Not many Christians know how to live in this radical freedom, the word says, which is their birthright. I died for you to be free and live freely in me. To walk along the path of freedom, you must keep your mind firmly fixed on me. Many voices proclaim, this is the way for you to go, but only my voice tells you the true way. If you follow the way of the world with all of its glittering glamour, you will descend deeper and deeper into an abyss. Christian voices also can lead you astray. Do this, do that, don't do this, don't do that. Do it this way, pray this way. If you listen to all of those voices, you will become increasingly confused. Be content to be a simple sheep 
listening for my voice and following me, I will lead you into restful green pastures and guide you along paths of righteousness. That's your Jesus calling for today, Tuesday, November 17th. I'm Trey Taylor. Thank you again so much for watching Coping with COVID, updates on the pandemic and information to help you thrive and survive COVID-19. Until the next time, I wish you peace, abundant blessings. Please be safe and be careful. And don't forget to wear your mask over your nose and under your chin. Blessings to y'all. Coping with COVID is brought to you by the South Carolina Department of Health and Environmental Control. Visit scdheck.gov for an updated list of testing sites and important information on how to protect yourself, your family, and friends from the coronavirus. SCDHEC, healthy people, healthy communities. Also, the City of Columbia Office of Business Opportunities, helping to meet the needs of small, minority, and women-owned businesses in the City of Columbia. Log on to columbiasc.net backslash OBO. Agape Counseling and Training Center. Call 803-779-2777 for licensed professionals of counselors and social workers helping families, engaged and married couples, and individuals of all ages gain an understanding of all aspects of their life. If you're having a challenge coping with COVID, contact Agape Counseling and Training Center at agapects.com. And Columbia Housing Authority. The agency is looking for stories from former residents of Allen Benedict Court to retain some of the property's rich history. In its 80-year life, Allen Benedict Benedict Court has been home to some of the country's elite, including a Grammy Award-winning performer, corporate executives, national television celebrities, a host of doctors, lawyers, and NBA greats. So share your pictures, mementos, and memories at chcares at chasc.org. Coping with COVID, brought to you by the South Carolina Department of Health and Environmental Control, the City of Columbia Office of Business Opportunities, Columbia Housing Authority, Agape Counseling and Training Center, and Palmetto. Media Connection. Coping. Coping with COVID with Trey Taylor.